Okay, so I had a couple of hours to kill this afternoon. Um, I was going to make a scroll former, then I thought it was a bit boring. So I had a quick look around the shop and found this lump of rebar. I thought, I don't know where it's come from, but it make a perfect knife. Um, just a small thing like the ones I've done out of bolts and all sorts of other bits and pieces. Um, but it will soon become apparent that I got my estimates a little bit wrong and it's turned out to be more like a small sword. So it's a, it's a, a little bit on the large side. Um, not quite a sword but more like a dagger I suppose. So anyway let's get straight into it and you'll see how it turned out. Okay so this is the bit of rebar I found. don't know where it came from. Um, it's about three quarter of an inch diameter. It looks to be galvanised but never mind I don't know why it's got a thread on the end. So we're going to use that. I've set the stop on my guillotine tool to set the where I'm going to have the shoulders um, I don't know if that's what you call it the uh, break between the handle and the blade anyway and I thought I'd use that it just will make the knife or the blade um, in the center you see what I mean if you do it over the anvil you could end up with it off center so we'll just stick her in Give it a few wallops. It's pretty tough stuff, this rebar. Alright, there you go. That's sort of in the middle now, so I can start giving it some beans. I'll get it warm though, because this is pretty tough stuff, this old rebar. Try it with a bigger hammer. I think this stuff's a bit like the railroad spikes. It's tougher than your mild steel, but not really as tough as or as high carbon as high carbon steel. I think it's sort of it's somewhere in between. Uh, that's how I'm going to treat it anyway. So I was going to try and hold it by the thread, but it became apparent fairly quickly that it got a bit too hot. So I had to resort to tongs. Just flattening this out. I'm not sure exactly when it becomes apparent <laughs> that I've uh, overestimated a little bit. I didn't really want to set the thing at that far out. I think I've just realised that I made it a bit long there. Never mind. That's when plans changed and it's now going to become a dagger rather than a some sort of a small knife. I don't suppose it'll matter. I've never made a dagger before. I say this stuff is fairly hard. I haven't done much forging recently, so my arms are fairly good at the moment, but if I have to do much more of this, they'll suffer again. I am. Um, really could do with investing in a little power hammer if I'm going to do much more. Right, it's hard work but we're getting there. I'm trying to keep it down the middle, keep it straight. If you can see that it's what I was after. Um, getting it down the middle of the handle. I suppose I could have started just by hand and then used the guillotine tool to define where my edge was going to be. But I thought if I started off like it, or with it, I don't suppose it makes much odds, swings and roundabouts really. Hey, 
taper it off a little bit. If it's going to be a dagger, it needs to be nice and pointy. Not that I really know what the definition of a dagger is, but... I have a vision in my head of what one looks like. Doesn't take long to get this warm again. Got it a little bit too warm there, but never mind. Try this beating it over the edge. Yeah, it certainly moves some metal, but then you've got to try and get the blooming marks out again. Still, we'll get there. You can see there, there's still quite a few marks in the back there. I'm doing that little escapade. Go back to the smaller hammer, I think. All right, I'm going to just redo the, the shoulder, I think. reposition the camera a bit. You can see it's sort of got a little bit unruly. So I suppose I could have done this you know afterwards instead of doing it at the beginning but I wanted to have an idea in my mind where or how much I was going to have a blade. Better redefined it. I always like to try and keep my work fairly straight in both planes. Um, it just makes life easier if, if it's all just about straight. It doesn't have to be a hundred percent, but. You know, you don't want to let it get too out of hand, otherwise you'll have a hell of a job trying to straighten it back up again. And you end up putting more hammer marks in it, which you've got to get out again. Now I'm just trying to go down the edges a bit. Try and sort of pull them out a bit. Leave a bit of meat in the middle. You see one edge I've just started. And do the other edge. You see they're just trying to pull them out a little bit. Turn it over and do the same the other side. So it's pretty old tough stuff this rebar. I've never used it before for forging. Never in my life have I ever forged a bit of rebar. I've welded with it, made stuff with it, but never forged it. And uh, I think I know why now. <laughs> Run down these edges again. I want to try and keep a bit of meat in the middle. Um, for obvious reasons, but uh, I will not forge the entire thing. I'm going to do quite a bit of grinding. Um, of course, unfortunately, I haven't got my new grinder up and running yet. It's in uh, pieces being painted at the moment. So it was a bit of a silly idea of me to 
take on this project today but I've got other grinders so I think we're going to be almost there for the forging just tidy it up a little bit Just moving my hammer to one edge at a time. Of course, this is doing this is forging it all back in again a little bit, but I'm trying to keep the shape balanced, which it's not really at the moment, but we'll get there. I think as this is pretty tough and it's not doing my hands or my arms any good I'm going to probably call it a day at that there's quite a little, a lot of forging I could do left but I'm going to go and do it uh, with a grinder so now I'm going to work out where I want to cut it off because I want to put one of my um, ball uh, nut what do you call them nut cheats on the end so I've just cut it off no I haven't I've just got a nut which happens to be the same thread as is on the rebar which is a bit of a shame if I'd known that I could have started at that end and uh, gone from there but I just think that's going to be a bit too long I run it sort of back down here a little bit so that would have made life quite easy if I could have done that with the thread. So I'm going to just bring it down a bit. So we mark it about there and cut it off. I'll just whip over and do that on the grinder. Cutting disc, there we go. Didn't take long. So now what I've got to do is just thin that down a little bit there. Stick the nut on and round it over so let's stick that in try and get her warm again don't think I'll need the tongs for a little while I can hold this now by hand there's enough length on it that it's not going to get too hot plus I'm only getting the very end hot burnt off a bit more of the galvanising just doing a short taper, very short taper just enough to go through the nut doesn't have to be particularly pretty this uh, as long as it's down the middle it doesn't need to be particularly pretty because it's not going to be seen Oh, of course, just out of camera shot. Great. But there you go, you can see the general idea. You stick that on there. Knock that in. Oh, here we go, it's come out. It will um, stay on if you um, sort of get it hot enough and beat it into the threads. Again, sorry, I hadn't noticed that it wasn't in camera shot. And then we just hammer that back in. It's come loose again. Typical, it's not working today. It's got it. So anyway, let's get it all hot again. And then give that some beans. Alright, nice and hot. Knock it back into itself. So sort of riveting the end over. That, that you poke through the, the nut. And then you round the nut off. I think most of you have seen me do this before. I have, I have, think I've got a ded dedicated video to these nut cheats. They're great for feet on things and handles and 
Just a nice little decoration to finish things off with. So I'm hammering that back in at an angle towards it's sort of going down at about 45 degrees really. But what's happening is while I'm doing that it's coming away at the back. Um, you, you'll end up with a sort of a void around the back where it, the nut joins the the bit of bar. I'll try and explain it or show you it in a minute, but there is a way of getting rid of that. I'm still just hammering down at about 45 degrees, or maybe less, maybe 30 degrees, something like that. And then back in on itself again. And you can see it's sort of not going in entirely, it's sort of squishing out again. Oh, don't let go of it. Now this is the bit you do to tighten that up. Hold the taper you've already made on the anvil and then just knock in that back edge. It does two things, it tightens it up and it gives a nice little finish to the underside of the, the nut. You get a nice little chamfer on there. knocking it down again and it brings it to a nice little point if you keep knocking and moving there you go, I don't know if you, I'll, you can't really see, I'll show you I hope where it's knocked in at the back just doing it again as it's cooling takes a lot of the hammer marks out as you if you uh, do it as it's cooling so that's really there you go you can see now that's pushed it right in back in against the the body of the the handle so if you have that as a foot you'd be looking at the top of that so it's it's quite neat if you uh, you know, closed it right back up onto itself. Right, I've just given it a quick wire brush and there you can see the result. It's quite neat and it's simply done with a nut. I use this all the time. I don't know if, we can, don't know if I can show you. Yeah, you can just see where it's squeezed itself back into the parent metal you've got obviously there's a, there's a join but it's it's nowhere near as big as it would have been had you not knocked that back into itself so that's that bit now to get on with a bit of grinding I guess so I haven't got the big new grinder up so we're gonna have to use my big burfa the six inch grinder I don't know as it'll um do the entire job but it will certainly start it I probably won't be showing you all of this because um, oh I've got a splinter a little bugger splinter um, because this is going to take quite a long while I think and you know, this metal is pretty tough stuff and like you can see it's I'm pushing on there quite hard and this is a fairly new belt on here, it's a uh, 36 grit so it should really be tearing it off but it's not particularly get rid of that so it's just getting it hot I think probably what I should have done was maybe annealed it I just uh, cooled it out to, to cut the handle um, I say I don't know if this stuff is that hard I'm treating it like a, a railroad spike which they aren't that hard they're a little bit harder than um, 
the mild still. Um, you can see there I'm getting a, making a bit more progress. I just cooled it out because it's getting hot. I won't be hardening, tempering, doing any of that with this, even if it was possible to, and it might be for all I know, because as a lot of you will know, any knife that I make becomes an ornament uh, or a letter opener because our strict knife rules in this country there's no way I'm uh, <laughs> walking around with that in my pocket um, I'll be inside before you know it I guess if I was out hunting or shooting I might get away with it but the times I do that and would need something like that with me is negligible so all my knives become letter openers all right you can see I'm making a little more progress now been on this for rather a long time now but we're getting there I think I will probably go and do a little bit on the um, flap disc and see if I can do a bit more on that but we're getting there slowly but surely right so I've changed my mind I'm not going to use the flap disc I suddenly remembered this bit of kit I've got this this is what I use for polishing this wheel um, or this machine I usually have it around the back of the bench I suddenly remembered this um, rubber wheel I've got with these um, sanding belts on and it's an 80, I think that's an 80 on here and it's actually doing a blooming good job um, so I'm going to have a go with that get a bit more off see it's tearing it off quite nicely and then I shall I've got some, I think it's 120 that I can put on afterwards. Yeah, it's working quite nice that. It's really tearing it off. Compared with the, I wish I'd started on this with the <laughs> in the first place instead of the the belt sander because it seems to be tearing it off. as quickly if not quicker and it's as I say it's only an 80 grit be careful you don't slip off smack yourself in the face I'm just going to cool it out and it's getting a bit warm but we're getting there so I'm just going to change the belts let's put a uh, 120 on, so this is an 80. It's got an arrow which way around it goes. Now I had these specially made, these um, belts, because to buy them they were quite expensive. So tight asked me, decided to go to a company and get them made specially, which was, would you believe, much cheaper than buying them ready made. Um, but the diameter I asked for was a little bit on the tight side compared with the genuine ones you buy but they go on as you can see you just have to take your time to push them on without folding them now this is say 120 that's doing a lovely job yeah pretty pleased with that I'm going to have to get the grinder, the, the angle grinder in right up by where the handle joins I can't quite get into there but yeah nice, like that doing a nice job, I wonder if I can get into it there with that I can a little bit but I think I might end up doing it with the, grind, with the angle grinder I think I'm going to stick with going up and down rather than the other way. Hmm. 
Hmm, nice. So, I'm just going to have to get in there with the, the angle grinder. And then we'll try with... Alright, so I've just got in there with the angle grinder. I'm just going to take this off now and try with this... Um, it's like a... I don't know quite what it is. It's a bit like a scotch bright. Oh, that's coming off. That ain't going to go on. That's got it. Um, yeah, it's a bit like a scotch bright. It's sort of an impregnated fibre wheel sort of thing. It's... I'm surprised it's not sparking. Normally it sparks. Because it has got a grit in it. But uh, it doesn't actually seem to be doing an awful lot. So maybe I've over -har or hardened this accidentally. Um, if I use this again, a bit of rebar for anything, I shall definitely try kneeling it just to see if it does make a difference. So I've never um, forged with it before. So it's a bit of a learning curve. I use this sort of fibre thing on uh, some of my knives, my um, shearing knives, just to sharpen them. Just run it across the back and it uh, just puts a little bit of an edge on. I've got another one which I think is slightly coarser or slightly different. I won't say coarser, slightly different grit. Yeah, you see that one's sparking a little bit. But it's um actually it is finer I think. Yeah, you can see that, that's bring that up quite nice. So we'll persevere with this for a little while. This isn't uh, turning out too bad. I was a little apprehensive about doing this. A bit impetuous of me today because I'm. I don't normally not all that keen on making knives, but I just suddenly thought about it when I saw that bit of rebar on the floor. I thought I've made knives out of all sorts of other things, but never a bit of rebar. And it's turning out reasonably well. All right, now this is my polishing mop. This is what I normally use on this machine. Let's find some soap somewhere for it. I've got it here somewhere. Here we go. Let's give it a little, a little dab. That's the brown, which. Is a sort of a general purpose one, I think. I tend to use the green or the white quite a lot. And I did have a grey one, which was brilliant. That was a real coarse one for the first go. But I seem to have lost it. I don't know where it's gone. I think it's probably fallen on the floor, gone under the bench, and got covered in crap. I dare say if I investigated under the bench I might find it. Let's try the green one. Give them all a go. See which one brings it up best. Try crossways again. I'll be getting people saying, oh, you should always go in one direction. Yeah, whatever. Well, it's coming up. I'm not going to spend hours and hours doing this. Um, 
if I wanted to get it like mirror I would have um, done it with progressively finer sandpaper first but uh, I just want to get it looking a little bit shiny you know I'm not 100% bothered as I say it's only going to be an ornament or a letter opener at home so it ain't going to make much difference right I've given it a quick clean up with uh, the wire brush on the handle to get the remainder of the galvanizing off and you can see it's not 100% shiny and it's certainly not 100% sharp it's not no way is it going to slice through tissue paper or anything like that but it's it will cut and I dare say if I stabbed you with it it'd kill you so there you go a rebar dagger All right, you can see there's still a few lines in it and the yellow isn't heat treating or any heat in it, it's the, the, the lights. I've got uh, horrible yellow fluorescent lights in here. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.